best new features of SharePoint 2016. Uh, this is a, a quick overview of some of the things that our team thought were particularly compelling. And one of the things of real interest to me uh, was over the last year or so, a lot of rumors out there that Microsoft is less dedicated uh, to the content management, uh, particularly document management capabilities of SharePoint. And one of the things that you'll see today is it's far from the truth. And I'd heard also internally uh, that it's far from the truth. It was speculated on, but wrongly so by those who uh, sort of had proclaimed document management and the capabilities around that content management uh, dead and we'll, within SharePoint. And we'll show you uh, really some of the great new uh, features around uh, that in particular, uh, as well as some other features. Um, another thing to um, want to point out as well is that one of the things that we've really come to note, and it's just the core to the success of any collaboration platform, uh, and particularly any solution built on a platform, is the increase in usability. But we'll show you some, or talk to some examples shortly. So moving uh, right along. Uh, just uh, some housekeeping stuff. So GigWorks has been a long leader in the development of business solutions on the SharePoint platform and Microsoft stack. Uh, and so be it on premise or in the cloud, we have full capabilities, uh, rich and long experience on all these different platforms out there. We've won a number of awards over the years. Um, <clears throat> we're an approved vendor for Microsoft's uh, legal and corporate affairs group. We've been in every evidence program of SharePoint since 2007. And uh, we, have a variety and an incredible breadth of customer type, but we do have particular long experience and uh, deep and rich experience around architecture and engineering, legal, professional services, financial, et cetera. Uh, we've also launched uh, over the last year our own third-party product under a new product name and company, Project Ready. It's a business solution set, um, software as a service, uh, but it's a, all about uh, control and visibility across projects and documents. And so other webcasts around that, uh, but a little bit uh, about uh, where we're at. And um, really also rather exemplary of uh, our shop in that we've been uh, early adopters, progenitors of the new emerging technologies and capabilities uh, as it relates to these uh, business solutions. Uh, we have a number of packaged offers. Um, so under the GigWorks uh, brand, if you will, um, SharePoint and Office 365 workshops, it's always important as you go to adopt a platform or transition to the newest, latest, and greatest uh, to get up to speed about what those features mean, and that's what that package does. Um, business pl uh, solution planning, uh, which is critical to any successful project. Uh, our rich uh, advisory services plan, where our experts are on demand to uh, support your experts. Nintex workflow and quick starts, and compliance uh, workflow uh, quick starts as well. In terms of our uh, sister company, Project Ready, uh, our applications encompass the collaboration engine, which is all about project and program management, our document control suite, viewer, CAD management, and matter management engine for the legal uh, industries. And uh, these, again, are cloud-based SaaS uh, offerings um, that add enormous control and visibility over your projects and document movement. Now, this Microsoft SharePoint wheel I've been showing now for 10 years, and whether or not they still stick to this paradigm, we still think it's relevant, and that SharePoint continues to develop across what has been referred to as its pillars to extend and create an uh, incredibly rich platform uh, for companies to develop business solutions on to tie together the myriad of points that make up the larger collaborative uh, story, if you will, that you collaborate on information from across business systems, on content you're looking for and working uh, in communion. And so uh, to echo back to one of my earlier comments about document management, you know, SharePoint was, uh, it, it is by far the best value for what I refer to as binary management, uh, blob management. But the versioning, the history, all that stuff is well and good. But to be a, a really valuable uh, document management solution, compliance really sits at the heart of content. And with that, we have a number of really uh, great uh, features that have evolved into the 2016 platform. For one is deletion policies. Um, so you can really get very governed over uh, who gets to delete things, control its retention from the system above and beyond records management, sort of down and dirty deletion, you know, hits the 
when it hits this recycle bin, that recycle bin, and the rules around it with meta values, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, the ability to enforce policies on templates and entire site collections. So again, much greater granular control to maintain compliance across the organization and to audit who has done what within uh, a collaborative uh, system. Another one that we find very compelling in this, uh, very much around the user experience, is durable links. So durable links are, you know, you have a link to another document and another library, and you decide to, you know, tweak your taxonomy, move that content, rename it so it's a friendlier name, more logical name. Well, in the past, those kind of activities of renaming and movement of content would have broken the link, which, you know, with, with a, a million documents running in an enterprise system is a right nightmare. So now we have resource-based URLs, which create these durable links. So as you move content, rename it, um, these links are now unaffected. And so this user experience where they've gone out of their way to create linked content remains uniform, regardless of what you uh, do in terms of a taxonomy exercise over time. Expanded file name support. This is, again, around usability. Uh, on content management, it is just natively intuitive for folks to use an ampersand. And having that break um, and having to train your users was something that was an exercise that was uh, less than stellar, especially if you're used to using uh, older legacy uh, document management systems like OpenText or Documentum, where they had benefit of what is essentially an indexed file system where they could use pretty much any character they wanted. Uh, so now uh, SharePoint also supports those characters. Large file support. Uh, we do have a lot of activity in the architecture, engineering, and construction space. Uh, one of the uh, challenges in an industry like that is, in fact, file size. Um, this has now been uploaded, uh, updated to 10 gigs as uh, the file size, and it's only going to get larger. So, uh, And you can actually configure the desired maximum file size limit per web app on your farm. Further extending usability, uh, the, the pretty and the important, if you will, is extended support for business intelligence. So SQL 2016, uh, with extended abilities around Power Pivot, uh, the scheduling of data refreshes, workbooks as data sources, all that siloed uh, intellect in the form of those individual workbooks can now be used as data sources, so you don't have to throw away you know, a decade's worth of work that sits housed with inside your Excel. Management dashboard for Power Pivot, Power View reports, uh, to be able to, to subscribe to Power View, and report alerting, which is also particularly key. If you have key metrics in a report that are moving your enterprise forward, the ability to be alerted on those uh, metrics is a huge, huge, huge value to businesses. Sharing improvements. Uh, I don't know if we have it in here, but lo and behold, in the coming months, finally co-authoring in Excel. For those of you who are a fan of co-authoring, it's one of my favorite things that have uh, emerged in the SharePoint world over the last half decade or so, was co-authoring. And Excel was one of the first uh, in terms of online, but it was destructive and clunky as all get out. Finally, it's caught up to the rest of the Office stack. Uh, additionally, the ability to see uh, who a folder is shared with when you're viewing a folder, uh, one-click email for approve or deny of access, improved version history and the ability to compare data, and version history being maintained for documents in OneDrive uh, or SharePoint. So OneDrive for business, um, you know, especially at the price of free for a terabyte per user, uh, was, is, is ever bit as good as Dropbox. But Dropbox I don't particularly like because there wasn't a history, and now we have that in OneDrive. In terms of the enhancement of search, uh, much more extensive uh, crawling capabilities. Previews have now extended into other assets other than Office documents, because uh, we all store a lot of other uh, you know, images and videos. And so now by clicking on the call out function, you get those previewed as well. Sensitive content search. So this is uh, bleeding back into DLP now, where you can restrict search for the enterprise or by Active Directory groups. Uh, for if you're a member of this group, you can't see anything with a credit card number in it. Um, this is a big thing in terms of 
increasing the value of SharePoint as a document management system because for those of you who are HIPAA regulated and have other regulations both set by your internal governance team as well as outside regulatory authorities, the ability to restrict search based upon content sensitive uh, information um, really goes a long way to maintaining compliance across the board. And this really does tie into data loss prevention, which also has a remarkable number of new features around it. So with this, uh, you can turn on these policies. You can query uh, the uh, history and the configurations of your DLP from eDiscovery. Apply those uh, DLP rules to assist in eDiscovery. And with this, uh, continuing along into information rights management, the finally, much more mature encryption um, and the ability to uh, restrict recipients or allow recipients to edit and print but not forward via email. There's this highly integrated ecosystem in the cloud that Microsoft has created um, is really uh, bringing together uh, all these siloed activities into single manageable, governable activities across their stack. And so with content and SharePoint being able to restrict it from a file or a forward out of email or from a physical device onto USB uh, is a very important improvement as it relates to uh, true mature document management. Because again, without rights management, DLP and the like, um, you know, there's, a, there's great extended uh, utility and value. Uh, there's now a concept of mini roles. Uh, so for those of you who are deploying SharePoint on-premise, um, the ability to um, configure and rapidly roll out forms based upon a topology um, on these six predefined roles. Is this server going to be for distributed cache search? So the configuration of on-premise SharePoint has also been uh, remarkably streamlined. And then hybrid features. People have been talking about hybrid for a while. It was the big story out of Ignite last year was hybrid is it for the next year, two, and five. And with that, recognizing that hybrid uh, is part of the journey to the cloud. You're not going to dismantle what you have on premise. Most of it, particularly our larger clients, are exploring how to do this. And there were some challenges, though, with hybrid that have been really very greatly uh, addressed. For one is the ability to sync files with Office 365 and to get to their files from any device, but the, also the ability to follow sites be integrated uh, into a single usable context. So in other words, whether or not data resides on-prem or online, they can follow those sites through a seamless user experience and a single delivery of related and relevant content. They have a single profile across the stack. And then search uh, is now uh, very, very seamless in terms of hybridization, where you can use search connectors even as far back as your 2007. And when you query via your Office 365 interface anything, you have one single search experience for your users with content being federated uh, across. You have two farms on-prem, one's 07 for legacy purposes, 2010, and you're setting up 2016 online, you're really going to have a very tightly knit and coherent search experience for the enterprise. Site folder views, uh, again, these are enhancements to OneDrive um, so that if you're following a particular library or folder, if you will, you can have that automatically, if you will, appear in your OneSite drive. And even though that content's not in OneSite, you're in that OneSite area to interact with the content that you've been following throughout. Again, this is not only an enhancement to the, uh, I would state the uh, sort of more technical and compliant capabilities of OneDrive now, for instance, with versioning, but also from the usability perspective, where end users have uh, increasingly one place to go, one set of operating procedures to affect change to make information workable for the enterprise across the uh, on-premise and online Microsoft stack. Uh, finally, Project Server. Project Server has, for a long time, and come closer and closer to a flavor of SharePoint. Uh, they've gone much further to integrate SharePoint Server uh, into uh, the 2016 stack. 
And um, that, that's our quick highline summary. This is a very quick overview. We'll be going into depth on these features over the coming months, but we wanted to give just a quick bit of information out there for people to uh, mull over and to start getting them thinking on uh, how some of these features might be able to assist them in their development of their enterprise. Thank you for everybody's time and look forward to having you back as we drill into detail on these new features as they emerge. Thank you again. Talk to you next time.